Hey guys, this is Eric Wanganer with Wanganer Racing. This video is a difference in power between different oil pans. Um, you would not believe the amount of power difference there is in a pan and a pump setup. We obviously had to change the pump to go with the pan. But that pan-pump combination is worth a lot. So just to give you an idea, sometimes we can switch manifolds, a nice ported manifold, or even a better carburetor, and we'll gain 10. These two examples, one of them gained 30 horsepower. So that's just an oil pan and pump. So the reason for it is windage, which I always thought like, oh yeah, it's worth like 10 maybe, right? I had no idea it would make this much of a difference. And also looking at the oil pressure itself, as far as the pressures and the consistency of it, world of difference. And I think the major this is probably the biggest thing that most people miss out on is the oil pans and how important that is. Especially since most 90% of you are running wet sump. And even you LS guys, you've got a nice windage trait, so you got kind of an advantage over the rest of us. But if you're like a big block Chevy, uh, small block Ford especially, um, big uh, small block Chevy even, um, Mopar guys, the pan is worth power. That old pan, the way it reduces the windage, it's power. So I'll just kind of show you. So I'll give you the first example. This first one is the big block Chevy. And I had a good pan on it. It wasn't like we just grabbed the stock pan, threw it on there, then put on the nice trick pan and it won. The first pan that was on there was a hamburger oil pan. It's one that fits most chassis like your Camaros, whatnot. It has a windage tray that goes across it and it's got a little crank scraper that's built in it. It's really common. It's a nice pan. It's nice, economical. It's, a nice, it's an overall, it's a great pan, right? What we switched to was a much more expensive pan though. It was about 800 bucks and it's a Moroso one and it's got the aluminum with a kick out. So what I mean by that is it's got, it's got a kick out on one side that goes all the way around. It's a pain in the rear to put the pan on because the bolts actually have to go up through the pan and you tighten there and they've got plugs at the bottom of the pan that seal your hole for where you try to put in your bolts to hold the pan onto the block. It's kind of a pain. However, that kick out really helps. It then has a windage tray at the bottom, but even further, where your main caps are, there's sections. A piece of metal that sticks up in the pan that doesn't make contact with your main cap, but it's directly below it the whole way. And that keeps the oil from roping, uh, which is spinning around the crankshaft and going that way. Huge, right? That's the reason why those pans are so expensive. That was the first one. The, the engine itself made 842 horsepower. This is a 540 big block, it's pretty radical. It made 842 horsepower before, and I'll show you this graph in just a minute. 872 of horsepower after, and no one's paying me to say this. Moroso didn't give me the pan. Titan did send that oil pump though, and that was a gear, gear rotor design. But um, yeah, that was the difference, huge difference. Both pumps, by the way, standard volume. What I used before and after, standard volume. I don't ever like to use high volume oil pumps. I think they're a waste, you end up just what you end up doing is using horsepower to blow more oil everywhere. And then besides taking more horsepower to turn the pump, you then to create more windage problem. Now the small block Chevy one that I have the other example for, and I'll show you both these graphs in a minute. I'll just make sure I pull this up. This one was, we had a, I can't believe, I'm trying to remember the pan that we had on it. We had a generic pan. This one truly was generic. Someone had gave me this pan, it had no windage tray. It was just your normal stock pan, right? But we didn't go with the high-end billet aluminum pan. Instead, I found um, one from uh, Moroso, but it's based off a stock core. So it's a steel pan, and what they essentially do is they take that steel pan, they cut out a section, and it has a kick out too. However, it doesn't have plugs like that aluminum one I was telling you about, so it's easier to put on the pan. Much easier to work with, but it's got a kick out. It's got a windage tray on the inside. It doesn't have the louvers like the one I just described, but that's a really nice pan. That one gained quite a bit, um, 21 horsepower from the pan. So that's, there's nothing to sneeze at. Both of that, both those pans fit in the car because they both have a, it's not a full sump pan. It's got the kick out like it should be and it actually fits in our car. Most of us are like, I'm not spending 700 bucks on a pan. I think actually now it's 800 bucks, inflation. Anyway, that um, most of us wouldn't think of spending that, but then we'll spend like 
Like I poured intake manifolds, I don't mind telling you. It's been 800 bucks to port a manifold. Sometimes we're lucky if we can get 20. This one also saves your engine. So no, I'm not trying to put myself out of business, but I am saying this is probably the most ignored thing. So let me show you these real quick. And then uh, here is the small block Chevy one. And again, you've got, um, this had a Moroso um, steel pan on it. Uh, nice new one. It has the Morosho kick out, the Melling uh, shark tooth oil pump. That's the red line. So this is the nice pan. The other one was just standard volume oil pump, just a standard old, old oil pan. And you could tell how much the, the pan and pump made a huge, much, humongous difference. Especially look at the torque. This was kind of shocking. You'd figure it'd fall out the whole way, but it had a really big bounce there. So that pan was really worth something on this, this deal. So this is like stock volume pump, stock pan. So that one was okay, okay. Makes sense, right? But when you look at the big block though, you're like, this actually had a great pan on it. So this was a Moroso standard volume oil pump too. Hamburger pan, like I said, we went to the Titan oil pump, that aluminum pan, and then look. I mean, it's, it, this is huge. What's is interesting is like you could tell, probably because the hamburger pan actually has um, a winage train and um, crank scraper that this pan, the stock one did not. So it didn't have near the problems until it starts really whipping around and then it becomes a huge problem. Also, this had a much larger stroke. This 540 has a 4250 stroke compared to 375 on the 406. But yeah, definitely worth some power. Anyway, guys, thanks for watching. Remember, I am no Superman. I did race Superboy. I don't port cast iron heads. I also don't respond to Instagram or Facebook messages. The best way to get a hold of me is through email, which is weingartnerracing at gmail.com.